Hello and welcome to part two on value. If you did not watch part one, it is important that you go back and complete that lesson first. In part one, we made a value scale, which we're gonna be using today. We also learned four different techniques for shading. We're gonna be using some of those four different techniques today in lesson two. In lesson two, our art vocabulary today is going to be contour, still life, scale, and cast shadow. Now, what does that word still life mean? We hear it a lot, but do you know what it means? Hmm, let's break the word apart. Still means not to move, so if I stand very still, I'm not moving. Life, we know what life means, it happens every day around us. So a still life is a drawing, a painting, or an artist's creation of something that they've set up. Now, most still lifes tend to be fruit, and the reason why is they're easy to draw, and it's easier to show value on those. The first still life we have was about fruit, and that was from Jacobo in 1504. Now, in lesson one, we talked about this very famous artist, Caravaggio, and today we're going to talk about his still life. I think it is probably one of my favorite paintings of all time. When he painted it and they hung it up, they couldn't hang up any other painting next to it because it was so masterful that it was better than all the other paintings. So it got its own wall. Now, Caravaggio is using shading or value in his still life, and we're going to be doing that today. Caravaggio painted this when he was only 30 years old, and it's actually his only painting that we have that he doesn't have people in. He loved painting people, but this still life was so amazing that we know Caravaggio for this basket of fruit. And that's the title of the painting. Very easy, basket of fruit. So today's lesson, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be setting up a still life. We're gonna be drawing that still life. And the last thing we're gonna be doing is adding value to the still life. And that's what really brings it to life um, and makes it look more realistic. So let's start at the first step of finding objects to put into a still life. Let's get started. Now what I want to do is I want to have my fruit stand out of my bowl a little bit so I can see more of those shapes when I draw it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some things like a piece of an old t-shirt, put it in there, some wrapping from some packaging I got, put it in there, squish it to the bottom. And then what I can do is I can set my fruit right on top of that so they stand up a little bit higher so I can see more of the shape. And when I go to draw my still life, it'll be a little more interesting. So now I can see my shapes coming out of my bowl a little bit. I have my light source coming from this side. I have what's going to be called a cast shadow on this side. We're going to learn a little bit more about that today. But putting something at the bottom of your bowl helps your still life be able to see more of it. Unless you have a lot of fruit, then you can build them all the way up. Now, if you don't have fruit, you can also use something like toothpaste, toothbrush. Whatever you have around the apartment will work out fine. The first thing to think about is where is your light source? A light source is where your light's coming from. So mine is the window right here. So I might set up my still life right on this desk right here so I can see light coming in and hitting one side of it. I can see the shading or the shadow will be on that side. So think about where your light source is coming from before you start. Okay, so for this lesson, all you're really gonna need is a sheet of paper and a pencil with an eraser. Now, when we're looking at our still lifes, there's two ways you can draw it, either portrait or landscape. Let's leave it side by side and let it go landscape. Now, the first thing we talked about was contour lines. What is a contour line? A contour line is the lines around the shape or an outline. The French word contour means outline. So if we're talking about contour lines, we know that contours mean the lines around something. So if I'm looking at my bowl of fruit again, I can see that the lines around my fruit are gonna be the contour lines. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start by drawing the bowl and some of my contour lines. This part I'm gonna speed up. Okay, so this is the basic contour line drawing. So I can see just the basic outlines of my bowl of fruit. 
they're quick, they don't have to be exact, but what you're trying to do with a contour line is you're trying to catch the shapes. So I have one, two, three, four apples and my banana. And then I have my bowl. And am I keeping my shapes the whole way? Now, in Caravaggio's painting, we saw he had nothing in the background. So today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave our background open as well. Now comes in that fun part of adding in value. Now, one thing we need to talk about, number one, is the light source. Remember the idea of the light coming in and hitting one side? And the other idea is the, what's called a cast shadow. So wherever the light cannot hit, the cast shadow will show up. So if you go outside and you stand out in the sun, you're gonna be having a shadow usually behind you. But if the sun's behind you, your shadow will be in front of you. So it kinda of depends on where your light source is. So let's get started with shading. Now, yesterday we talked about stippling, hatching, cross hatching, and blending. Today what we're going to be using is blending. Uh, it's my favorite kind of shading, so we're gonna move into that one. But if you wanna use stippling, hatching, cross hatching, you can use any of those techniques. Let's go ahead here and let's get started. So what I need to think about is the darkest areas and then the lightest areas. So on my picture, I know I have my shadow right here. So what I'm gonna do, remember those tight little circles yesterday we were making when we were using our shading, learning those different techniques of shading? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start adding those in right here. This is where my cast shadow is for this particular apple. Now, it gets a little bit lighter, so remember we use different pressure with our pencils, like how hard we push on the paper? So I'm gonna get a little bit lighter. And it's okay if it's not perfect. This is our first value drawing of a still life, so we need to do our best to make an effort, just try our hardest. So you can see what I have is I have things moving from dark to light. Now, even when I shade on my fruit, my fruit has shape as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with my blending again. Maybe these tight little circles. My sun can't hit this part. So if my light is up here, it can't hit this part. That's what has a, gives it a shadow. And we remember as it gets towards the light, as light can touch it, it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. Now, one thing we talked about in our video, at the beginning of our video, was scale. What does that word scale mean? Scale means the size of things inside your shapes or inside your still life. So if I made one apple really big and the other apples really small, that wouldn't be the right scale. So scale means keeping things the right size. Now, I did a pretty good job when I was using my contour lines of keeping my scale, but you can always go back and erase some of your contour lines and fix it if your scale is a little bit wrong or wonky. Now I'm gonna keep shading and shading and shading, but this is the part where I'll fast forward a little bit and then we'll come back in and talk about this. Oh my goodness, that was a ton of drawing. It took me a long time. I'm not quite done. I have two more steps I wanna show you. But before we get moving, please don't be discouraged if yours doesn't look exactly like mine. Remember that I've been drawing and practicing with value many, many times, and this might be your first try. So take your time, pause, rewind. Um, you can always fast forward and do your best with this. 
First thing I wanna show is my light source is coming from up here. My light from my window, we talked about coming in, shining on top of these areas. The areas that the light can't hit, those are my shadows and those are my darkest areas. Now to do a highlight, I can use my eraser and I can say like, I know the light's bouncing a lot off that spot right there. And I can slowly start to erase some of the areas that my light is bouncing off of. It's important to keep looking for that light bounce. And I added in some what's called highlights. We'll learn about highlights a little bit later though, so you don't need to remember that for our vocabulary word today. Now the one thing we did talk about is a cast shadow. So I'm gonna show you how to add a cast shadow to my bowl. And I'm also gonna show you how to shade the bottom of your bowl. Now we wanna do the same thing where it, our, sh our shading goes the same direction as our bowl. So I know that this side is going to be the darkest and my light was coming from the window on this side, so this side will be lighter. So again, those tight little circles, are gonna be the darkest at the back here. And then as I go towards the front of the bowl where it gets lighter and lighter, I'm gonna push less and less on my pencil. My pressure on my pencil is going to get lighter and lighter. So you can see as I'm shading this, getting lighter, Lighter, right underneath the lip of my bowl, I might have a little bit of a darker because there's less light that can get underneath there. And I'm slowly getting lighter with my circles. This is called blending. So I'm blending. Remember we talked in the last lesson about contrast, that light to dark. And the more contrast this will have, the more realistic this will look. Now the front of my bowl right here, I'm gonna leave a little bit of space not shaded in and it's because the light might bounce on that part of the bowl. Okay, now one thing to do with, one thing you can do with blending is you can take your thumb and you can smear it Just make sure you have an eraser ready because you're gonna have to go back and probably smooth out some of those areas. Look at that. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add a cast shadow. Cast shadow, remember, is when the light's hitting it, it's making a shadow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make my shadow come off here. Now my shadow is so big that I'm not gonna see the full thing, but my cast shadow is on the other side of my bowl where the light cannot hit. And what I like to do is I like to leave a little line between my cast shadow and my object, or in this case, my bowl, just to show where one starts and the other continues. Now in a cast shadow, as it goes away from the object, it gets lighter and lighter. That's because there's more light that's able to touch it. This reminds me exactly of my value scale that I made in my last lesson, going from dark to light. And what I'm gonna do with this one, what I did before is I'm gonna smear And there is my cast shadow, okay? Now, the last thing I can do is I can go back with my highlights, fix those areas when I was smearing, they got covered in. Go around my object, kind of clean up 
the background because I don't want shading on my background. And voila, there's our very, very hard art project. I want you guys to practice, practice, practice. You're not gonna get this on your first try. Just remember scale, size of things compared to each other. Remember our light source is coming from the top. Remember cast shadow are anywhere the light cannot hit. And remember still life is putting our objects in um, something that we can draw. And this is where I want you guys to get today. Oh, last thing I wanna say is remember our shading from last lesson, okay? Take your time, try your hardest to be the smartest artist. Please stay safe and please stay creative. Until next week, I'll see you guys later.